Welcome. Today I'm going to demonstrate a very recent vulnerability called log 4 shell This widespread and critical vulnerability grants remote code execution thanks to problems affecting a specific Java library uh, used for logging purposes named log4j. As some of you might know, I'm a professional penetration tester, so I had the chance to test this vulnerability in the wild. As of course, I can do this here for obvious privacy reasons. I'm going to demonstrate this vulnerability thanks to this free to try hack me room that deploys a vulnerable virtual machine affected by this problem. So the first thing we should do once we join this room would be to start the vulnerable machine by hitting this button here. That will provide us with an IP address within Try Hack Me the VPN network that we can reach. As a matter of fact, you can play this room in two different ways. Either with a tech box, which is basically a virtual machine deployed in your browser, or by running OpenVPN and connecting this way with your local virtual machine to the network. I'm going to choose the second path because attack box doesn't allow to perform one of the steps required here because the free version doesn't provide any internet access. As an attacking machine, I created a Linux Ubuntu 20.4 VM here. And the reason why I made this choice is that this vulnerability, at least in this free room, requires for a specific Java version to be deployed on the attacking machine. Java version that Kali doesn't support because Kali comes with, with a more recent version. Or Java and I tried the exploit with Kali but it doesn't grant me a shell so let's start deploying the machine that will provide us with an IP address in a little bit Anyway, I think this room represents in a very real world fashion the way a penetration tester works because through this machine you not only get to exploit the vulnerability but you also get to detect it, mitigate it and patch it, which gives you a complete overview of what it looks like. So I definitely encourage you to try this room. Anyway, we're receiving an IP address here. And once we did that, we need to start answering some questions here now. To be honest with you, my purpose here is not to demonstrate how to solve the room, but mostly how to exploit and mitigate this vulnerability, which I think is more important. The first thing you want to do is reconnaissance, of course. 
that's the most important step in the penetration testing process. And I already performed a map scan on this vulnerable machine. So from the map output, we have three open ports that are SSH, RPC, and Apache Solar running on this 8983 TCP port. So that takes care of the question here. Now, after we did that, we can browse to the Apache server on the vulnerable machine. Let's now check again for an IP address. And now we're good to go. So, now we can browse the server. Now you notice that we're shown a complete configuration page, which is already an information disclosure vulnerability, thus it reveals a series of parameters, like the configuration file location, and stuff like that. Anyway, checking the walkthrough here, we know this indicator in the page that Love4j is in use, as in fact, we should be able to answer this question, which is, what's the directory where Solar stores file to? And uh, we can say that this is the directory where logs are stored within Apache Solar, which is slash var slash solar slash logs. And so this should be the answer to this. And in fact, it is. Now, in order to reply, to the other two questions, they provide you with some log files that you can download from here. I did it already. And once you did that, you provided with a compressed file that will contain all these log files. So now we need to know which of these log files contains a series of info entries showing repeated requests to a specific URL and port. To save you the hassle of going through all these files, I already did it for you. And I found out this is the interesting log file that we need. In fact, if we open it up, there's a series of repeated entries all related to the same path, which is slash admin slash cores. Plus, we notice that a lot of these entries contain a data entry point that we can control because we see a variable called params which stores an empty string, which means we can provide the value for this parameter here.
so if we can provide a value within this variable, we could also provide a value that connects back to our machine and gives us a connection back. And we could do that by using a bunch of different tools like input boxes, user and password login forms, and data entry points within the application, or HTTP headers, and any other place where you, you can supply user data, basically. So, in order to demo this vulnerability real quick, we need to start a netcat listener on port 9999 this way. Already did it. Once we did that, we can run this curl command to get a connection back to our machine. Now, this command uses the so called JNDI functionality which is the Java naming and directory interface. This directory interface can be used to access external resources or references. So we can weaponize this functionality to have a connection back to our machine. That's what this command basically does. So I already have a command here. This value is basically your IP address on Triacne VPN. In my case, it's this one. We notice that we received the connection on port 9999 from the target machine. But we see some gibberish and nothing else. And the reason why this is, is because basically our payload doesn't do anything while we should provide a payload accessing a server that redirects the connection back to another server where we store the actual exploit. In this case, this doesn't store an LDAP call to an HTTP server, so that's why we got some gibberish back. Now, if we want to actually exploit the vulnerability, we need to stage the so-called LDAP referral server. that will practically grab a connection to port 1389 and will connect to a Python server or any other server when we can store the exploit file and will execute it. In order to deploy this LDAP referral server, we can use a software called MercialSec. I already installed it in my virtual machine. The problem I ran into 
And the reason why I ended up creating a Ubuntu virtual machine is that reviewing the readme for the merchant sec utility it advises to use Java 8 and Kali comes with Java 11. In this case instead Ubuntu doesn't come with any Java version pre-installed, so I was able to manually install the needed version. And here you'll find all the required steps to do so. The problem I ran into as well with the tat box was that while you run this command within merchant sec, this doesn't succeed because the free version of attack box doesn't support any internet connection so you wouldn't have to either subscribe to a premium version or run it in a local virtual machine which is what i did at the end so in order to actually exploit the vulnerability We need to run Marshall Sack in a different way because basically this will have Marshall Sack listen on port 1389 while performing a connection back to our HTTP server storing the exploit on port 8000. Of course, this value. Uh, will have to be changed based on the IP address you have from TriHackMe VPN. So now the next step requires to create a Java exploit like this that we will call exploit.java. Of course, this value needs to be adjusted, but anyway, the concept is that Java will run a netcat command that will give us reverse shell back to our machine on port 9999. Now, after saving this file, we need to compile the exploit with this command. In our specific case, if you use uh, a local virtual machine, the command will be java c exploit.java. So these other two parameters need to be removed from the command if, if you're not using the tag box. So this command will compile the exploit creating a file called exploit.class that we're going to host on Python HTTP server with this command. This will start an HTTP server on port 8000. With that being done, now that we have all the required steps, we can start a netcat listener again. I'm going to do it here now. Now that we have a listener running, we need to run a curl command. But of course, we need to make sure the server is listening on port 1389 first, because that will redirect our connection to the exploit that will grant us reverse shell. So
So we received the connection on port 9999 on our machine. And we have a reverse shell. Now, to have an interactive shell, we gotta do a couple of tricks. First of all, I'm gonna spawn an interactive shell with this Python command here, a one liner. So this is a full interactive shell we can use up and down arrows. Let's see what user we were able to log in as. And we see that it's user solar. Now if you want to understand what kind of privileges this user has we can run the sudo dash shell command. We notice that the uh, user is able to run any command as root on this machine without a password. That makes things really easy for us. So all we need to do to become root is run this command. Now that we achieved the privilege escalation, we can also obtain persistence on a machine by changing the user password to something we might remember more easily. So let's use the specific command to change the password for the solar user. And we updated the password. At this point, we can simply SSH into the machine as the solar user and achieve a pre escalation once again. So let's do it now. I'm going to exit out of here. Okay, so we're back in, and just like before, we achieve a privilege escalation like this. Okay, so we both exploited the vulnerability and were able to achieve persistence, even though I don't think. Changing the password for a user is probably the stealthier way of doing this. There can be probably other ways to achieve persistence on a machine, like adding another root user temporarily, or achieve a privilege escalation, stick your public SSH keys into authorized keys, and then access the remote server that way. Anyway, this is what we did.
we're talking about the stage here. Now, let's turn the tables and let's act like a defender and see how this specific attack can be discovered on a target machine. The problem is bypasses are really a large number and it's not very easy to have rules able to fully detect this attack. Here you can see a list of resources that you can use if you're a blue teamer, not my case. So, once we're back into the machine, we should move to the directory where solar logs are stored and we know what the directory is. It's mentioned on the configuration file that we have on the server here. I'm talking about this directory. So if we cd into that, and we have a look at the file affected by this vulnerability, we know what it is. We know it's solar.log. So if we get this file, Here's a series of entries that show how we got the connection back to our attacking machine. If this was the actual attack that was performed in the wild, it would be easily detected. But most attackers use bypasses and obfuscation methods to make things way harder for blue teamers. So, as an example, you can use a bunch of different bypasses like the ones mentioned here. I did personally try a couple of them, but I wasn't successful, but that's something I'll leave to you as an exercise. As for mitigation, basically, once we're in the machine, we need to find a specific bash script, solar.in.sh. So, as we're in the target machine, let's find this file. And it results to be located in Etsy default. So let's have a look at it. If we have a look at the walkthrough here, it tells us we can add a specific syntax preventing this attack from going through, which is this line of code here. So in order to do that, we need to go to the end of the file and paste this line of code and save it.
Once we did that, we need to restart the Apache Solar Service for the changes to take effect. Here is just a way for us to do it. I'm not going to use sudo because I'm root user here already. And that's the whole reason why I achieved the privilege escalation. I hate sudo. So we were able to restart the service, and now we can exit here. Now we're going to repeat all the steps we performed previously. So we see that earlier we had this LDAP referral server, which redirected the exploit to our attacking machine on port 8000 where the exploit class file is stored. And here we have a successful connection to our HTTP Python server that shows us that the exploit file was grabbed. Let's see what happens now. So let me start Again, listen on port 9999. And restart this Marshall Sec service. We now need to relaunch the curl command we used before. Notice how we don't have a successful connection. The exploit doesn't go through. Here we had this message saying send out that reference result for exploit redirecting to HTTP. Here we don't see anything. The server isn't redirecting really our connection. And if we go to Python HTTP server, the exploit wasn't grabbed. Nothing worked. So we could successfully mitigate the exploitation of this vulnerability and prevented the exploit from going through. So the takeaway from all this is that you should always patch your web services and anyway your potentially vulnerable software. And in fact, here he mentions one patch was released and actually there was a later update 2.17.1 that was released later. You should always update and patch the software you run in order to prevent critical and high vulnerabilities from being exploited in the wild. So this is something you need to keep an eye on and you need to be on your toes for this. So I hope this room was helpful for you guys and it gives you an idea of what the and testing process looks like for specific vulnerabilities like this. We started with reconnaissance, locating a vulnerable service on port 8983 TCP. Once we did that, we access the service that we noticed that log4j was in use. The service showed system settings that we were able to tell where the log files were stored. We were able 
to successfully execute and exploit that granted us a shell and we were also able to perform a privilege escalation on the machine. With that being done, we also achieved persistence by changing the password for the solar user and then we could SSH to the machine. We also saw how this vulnerability could be mitigated Anyway, this proves once again how important it is for security professionals to stay current and test and experiment new vulnerabilities when they come out in order to be better prepared to both detect them and exploit them and also to suggest remediation and mitigation strategies for their clients. That's all. Hope you liked it. Bye-bye.